I want to talk uh, St. Georgia Lawara. Um, I'm going to put my hand up and say I was guilty of drinking the Dragon's Kool Aid. Kool Aid. <laughs> oh, gets the best of we're, we're re- That's like the Tiger's Kool Aid. Yeah, I drank a bit of that Tiger's last Kool-Aid year. Kool-Aid the <laughs> Revitalised under Shane Flanagan. They're going to go home 2 0 yeah. to Cogra. They're going to do the Queensland sweep. And then, but I just forgot they're the Dragons. They're the Dragons. <laughs> yeah. And they were, look, and. That and Flanner said he was he was what do you say wasn't worthy of a of a dragon jumper. A jumper um, yeah. You know they were <coughs> terrible. What about um, Hamaso Tabuifado? Three tries, a um, couple of try assists from Jack Bostock, Wollongong Junior yeah. who's gone up to the mm. Dolphins for an opportunity. Thought he was really good. Um, Josh Kerr, another former dragon, mm. ran for 157 meters. I thought was another one really good. And that right edge of St. George Lawaras was paper thin. Um, highlighted. Jaden Sewer missed seven tackles in mm. that game. He's off contract, Jaden Sewer, too. Mm. Hasn't yeah. agreed a new deal yet. Yeah. He's got an off on the table f- from the Dragons. I mean, he was one of the players that looked like he was rejuvenated yeah. in the trials yeah. in the first week. So all of a sudden, um, <coughs> yeah, things look like the way we expected them to go for the for the Dragons this year. Um, Is I that Zach Lomax on that wing getting mm-hmm. caught out? Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> And around they go. And yeah, I mean, to, on the flip side to that, he did have another big game. Zach Lomax, plenty of runs, plenty of meters, but mm. defensively they were pretty fragile. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I wonder whether they they bought a bit of their own hype last week. You know, everyone had them as wooden spooners. Uh, they you know they saw what the Dolphins dished up the week before, which wasn't that great. But I think if you're going to go in, into a game being that cocky, you at least have to earn a bit of that before. Mm. Yeah. You know, um, and you know, this is a Wayne Bennett coach side. Like the odds that they were going to deliver two pretty poor performances weren't that great, especially at home. Yeah, mm. well, so. it was a reminder that the job Shane Flanagan's got in front mm. of him. Yeah, I mean, you don't turn that around in one week. What that club's been for so long, um, and they just got exposed by a team that turned up and wanted it more. Yeah, yeah. and and you know, we're looking to bounce back from last week at the Hammer. I mean. The hammer was diabolical the week before. <laughs> yeah. Di- and he got yeah. somehow, he got a, somehow he got a Dally M point. <laughs> he was yep. terrible. He should get sure all six this week because <laughs> he was so good. He, well, he only got five. He only got five. The one got one the week. All that compensates, doesn't it? But, I mean, he was, di- he was terrible the week before. So, so unlike <laughs> him. But, um, man, when he gets an open space, he's yeah. good to watch, isn't he? He is good to watch, um, yeah. I wonder, it'll be interesting to see what... Um, Flanagan does this week because he's made you know he's been very open about the fact that he's looking to rebuild the roster that everybody's fighting for their spots I don't know how like what sort of depth they have for him to be making any real changes but it'll be interesting to see whether he does make some changes heading into heading into this week well been interesting what he does with Jade sorry he missed seven tackles and as mm. I said he's off contract and hasn't mm. taken an offer they've gotten the table for him mm. whether he gives him a spell after that performance mm. um, you know they, they've got a lot of work to do yeah. yeah, a lot yeah. of work to do. Um, yeah, it just and you know. F- uh, f- he wasn't the only one though. I mean, think Ben Hunt missed about five or six tackles, yeah. didn't he? Yeah, he made a few errors, Ben Hunt, but he was again just working his backside off. Kicked yeah. that forty twenty. Um, tried <laughs> tried his best. Yeah. Um, so uh, Francis Molo got sin bin laid on for that. Mm. You know, trying to put a hit on with two minutes to go, way too little, too late to try and motivate your troops at that stage. But yeah. obviously, born out of frustration, given how poorly they played. Um, you know, yeah, a lot of work to do, and especially you're playing a cowboy side that bounced back to form. Yeah, well, bounced back form. Um, bounced back after they were trailing early and, and came back and knocked off the Knights in a heartbreaker for if you're a Newcastle fan. They weren't great though. I watched that game. I didn't think mm. the Cowboys were great in that game. No, um, but they just got a lot of points of attack haven't they they can mm. beat you so many ways the Cowboys mm. um, lost heel on Lukey which is a bit sad because he's had real yeah. injury problems heel on Lukey but they got that young kid Finifanuki yep. yep. I think I got it right who's a superstar um, and you know if the, if the Dragons turn up like that again oh. they'll lose by 50 yeah. Yeah. Because, this, because this Cowboys side they can put points on you mm. like Val Holmes is going to play as bad as he did again next week you guarantee you that mm. and they mm. still got away with it so um, yeah it's a real worry for Shane Flanagan they've got to weigh him up yeah mm. what about for the Dolphins and I've got to mention um, Jake Averulo left out round one mm. brought back in round two thought he played really well uh, defensively made a couple of poor decisions mm. but I mean they kept a clean sheet so that's fine but um, if you're the Bulldogs and you know Buzz did that yarn a few weeks ago about all the players they've cycled through in the last four, four or five years and the, the general feedback has been, oh well, they weren't successful, they need to clean house, but 
Jeremy Marshall, King, Jake Avarillo were two very good players I thought yesterday, and you know you go you go to Belmore this week for the the annual Belmore game at the Bulldogs, and there's a local junior there who could have been running out for him in a centre spot, but he'd be moved from fullback to five eight to mm. centre to the mm. bench mm. Um, at Canterbury. No one could find a spot for him, and then you know he's going to go to the Dolphins now, and much like maybe Luke Brooks at the Tigers, and mm. going from the Tigers to the Seagulls, you're going to see him really explode this season. Yeah, I, I, I hope so. I always liked Jake Avrilo as a player. I thought he was, like you said, a little bit hard done by with, with the way they used him, and a lot of it was out of desperation, right? So, yeah. you know, if, if it didn't work in the halves, he was shifted into the centre. When they needed something extra in the foot at, at the back, he was, you know, named at fullback. And I, I don't think he really had the chance to show his potential because he wasn't locked down into a spot that I don't think he probably wanted. I think in the end he wanted to be a half. Mm. Um, you know, but and now he, he has a shot at the Dolphins at centre. Um, look, it's it's a it's a strange one because if you look at um, you know both Avarillo and, and Jeremy Marshall King, and of course there's Paul Alamotti as well, who's a local junior, and they mm. let go, and he's just been re-signed at Penrith, and you know I can imagine he's going to be hopefully producing some pretty good things under that system there. So that's sort of like a you know a double blow for them. But you know they went from. Uh, Jeremy Marshall King to read Marnie like when that initially happened if you're if you're a Canterbury fan you would have thought yep that's an upgrade yeah right uh, even though mm. he was one of their best players when before he left initially you're thinking that's an upgrade now you're probably thinking Oof, you know Reed Marnie's got feel, feels like he's got the weight of the world on his shoulders he's trying too hard he's getting into you know he's always a little bit niggly there um, and it's probably the same thing with Avarillo you know you lose Avarillo but you've got Stephen Crichton coming in so you're thinking oh this is a bit of an upgrade so yeah, yeah it's a it's a interesting one I, I, I don't know like I I think only time will tell whether the Dolphins have made a, a good call with Jake Avarillo. But, um, yeah, I always rated him. I always thought he was a good player and, and probably was forced to play out of position for far too long in that, in that side. Mm.